Well, let's see. Will it work? <laughs> so, welcome back. Can you hear me? <laughs> um, can you hear me? Am I, is it on? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, no? It's a no. No? Can you hear me? Oi, oi, oi. It's a no. Soy Rolanda. Hola, si. Um, welcome back. I hope you all saw the marvelous Transmedia project outside. Uh, in case you did, but I will repeat it um, afterwards. Um, okay. This feels very awkward. Um, um, we'll welcome, welcome you back for the second round. I, I mentioned we're going to talk about the future. Um, this week, a lot of people were speaking about the continuation of the project, improving the project, Silla, uh, and a, a lot of the topics that we also addressed in the first uh, round will come to the table in the second round. We have two videos, uh, which we will see first. Um, but first, I would like to have an applause for our marvelous panel. <laughs> Maybe you can introduce yourself. Uh, Vladimir, can I start with you? Yeah, sure. So, my name is Vladimir Hercinievich. I'm a writer primarily, but I'm also president and creative director of Association Procodium from Belgrade, Serbia. Hello, well, my name is uh, Javier Sagarna. I'm a writer and I'm uh, the director of Escuela de Escritores in Madrid, Spain. Hi, my name is Ella Fortejak, and I work in Krakow Festival Office in Krakow, obviously, in Poland. And this institution is responsible for the literary activities in the city, and my role in SILA is uh, the LP. Hello, my name is Martino Gozzi, and I work for Scuola Holden, based in Turin. Hello, I'm Lavinia Braniste, and I'm a Romanian writer. Thank you. Welcome, all of you. And um, we first will check the films, and the first film it's a break. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I thought I had another break. Now I have some second. The curtain is up. We're trying to uh, uh, point it on the wall. Point it on the wall. It is buzzy now. Like I'm getting my order in the restaurant. So, um, is there any direction I should be clicking it in? And up or down? I don't know. Anyone who has any experience with clickers? Clickers, <laughs> <laughs> Just try everything, sir. My guy. This is also a transparent. Yes, yes. Norsia. And there is Norsia for those of you who know. Yeah. Oh, no. van hun verhalen, gedichten, columns en vervolgens presenteren de deelnemers deze uh, verhalen zelf in publicaties, in podcasts en op literaire podia. En um, daarnaast coördineer ik namens Wintertuin het project Robot Stories. Hierbij werken we in een collectief van schrijvers, interaction designers, wetenschappers en zorgmedewerkers samen. Uh, we maken interactieve verhalen die sociale robots vertellen. Hiermee werken we toe naar een betekenisvol gesprek tussen mens en robot in de zorg. Naar mijn idee kan literatuur veel betekenen in een zorg- of maatschappelijke context. Denk aan persoonlijke ontwikkeling, aan het versterken van het individu binnen een collectief systeem aan het laagdrempeliger maken van het literaire veld en aan de schrijver die kan dienen als een katalysator voor de verhalen die leven in onze samenleving. Hoe dient de auteur zich te positioneren in zo'n maatschappelijke of zorgcontext? 
Wat hebben deelnemers nodig om zich als schrijvers en verhalenvertellers te kunnen profileren? En wat heeft het literaire veld nodig om dit soort projecten te organiseren? Dat zijn mijn vragen voor jullie. Ik wens jullie een inspirerende meeting toe. Thank you, Noortje. Oh. 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 <laughs> I'm Andrei Mantala, I'm the director of the Federation of Europe and Publisher. We are a gathering of 29 national publisher associations uh, within uh, Europe and we look uh, to represent the position of publishers here in Brussels and uh, at European level. I do believe that uh, indeed, I mean, authors, publishers and, and, and all uh, part of the chain do have a responsibility in uh, as much as in fiction and non-fiction to, to, to reflect society, but also to allow us to uh, move forward our thoughts and our understanding of society. So um, clearly, uh, whether it's uh, educational publishers, uh, children's book publishers, or, or just uh, general trade publishers, they have a responsibility. So I think it's, it's also our duty in the book chain to bring new ideas to the floor, to, to challenge people, and to make sure that they have uh, um, well, they have a diversity of opinion to look at and to create to make their own. Uh, this being said, of course, you have to broaden their horizon and you have to do it differently. But this has to be done uh, uh, within the the book chain and not uh, uh, for uh, for uh, policy, whether European or, or 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 national. I think it would be disastrous. And maybe your your uh, panel or the people in in the group could could ask themselves. I mean, uh, whether they think it should be encouraged by policy, and and whether that this is something they would call um, upon the uh, legislator to 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 do, or whether they think we are better equipped as human being to reflect upon it. Okay. So some challenging questions uh, by Noortje and, and Anne. Um, let's first, as I said, uh, we've been talking this week a lot about uh, this question, um, what is uh, a literary artist and what is the future of, uh, of a literary artist? Um, to start off with, is the writer of tomorrow a completely different writer? Is my first question to you. Martino, can I ask you to respond to that? Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, big questions this afternoon. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. But I would like to go back to something that Ilke said in the previous panel. This is something we've been discussing the whole week. Um, <clears throat> I think we are, we're at a point where we can, we can embrace a broader definition of writer. If we look at ourselves here in the audience, we can see that we're all many things at once. Most of us are not just either writers or translators, but we are, of, it, as it's often the case, writers and translators and conceptual artists and activists and curators um, and performers. Why not? Mm -hmm. So I think the future is hybrid, is mixed. And in this new scenario, the book is one step of a broader journey. Mm -hmm. And the more fluid, the more flexible we are, uh, the better. This doesn't mean that this is a recipe or a formula that can be applied to everyone. I was reading yesterday in the New York Times that in all of the United States, there is one lady who works as a poet, as a poet and lives off of it. Um, lucky her, but uh, everyone else um, on both sides of the Atlantic 
is probably going to be doing more things at once. And I think this is an opportunity rather than a constraint. Mm -hmm. It's fun to do more things at once. And there's something to be learned from the other areas mm -hmm. where, we, where we apply our creativity. Is it fun, Lavinia? Mm, I'm not sure I agree. <laughs> like if you have to work too much, then uh, it's not fun. If yeah. you have to work for the money because mm -hmm. you cannot live off the royalties or if you are in a, on a, in a literary environment where they don't pay you for the events where you go to, mm -hmm. to talk or for the promotion of the books that you have to do with the book you mm -hmm. wrote or you translated, then you have to do something else in order to be able to live and then, I don't know, it sort of makes you frustrated. I mean, it's it's what I've been struggling with for my entire yeah. adult life. Uh, you know, finding a balance between writing and the other jobs that I have. Mm -hmm. So I think it could be interesting to be involved in more activities at once, but um, also I think we need uh, more fair practices on mm -hmm. the market also. Yeah, I wouldn't also agree that it is entirely fun, but might be. But uh, from my perspective as a festival organizer, I can see that it is very challenging, especially after the pandemic, to attract audience just, just to the meeting with mm. author. So we are trying to look for new uh, possibilities how to engage writers and translators and organize, organize workshops and uh, any other forms of, of activities, but not every person uh, feels good at this kind of activities mm. because not everyone has uh, enough skills which is a problem because uh, on one hand, we have to think about new forms, how to attract people to the meeting, but on the other hand, we, uh, we have to um, make them, th those people comfortable and it's impossible to force a writer to perform if he or she uh, doesn't feel comfortable. So it is a huge a challenge for the future to look for uh, ways how to professionalize writers and translators mm -hmm. in other skills and other fields. Yeah. So we're talking about a hybrid situation um, in which, of course, revenues are a big part of the, of the, um, the, the discussion. Um, but we are also teaching people how to write, as you mm. do, uh, Javier, in, in your school. Yeah. Does this mean that uh, as schools we should rethink the model of writing as well and rethink the competences that we um, offer? Well, I think um, everything is a, is a matter of balance. Mm -hmm. Um, we are talking the change, and I think is the, the the word we have pronounced the most in, in, in this afternoon. No? And I agree, the changes are are, are working and on their way. But um, I also think that um, probably if I, when I see my students, when I go to class, when I see what they are they we are willing, they, what they will is to write books mm -hmm. and to publish books. And they, they, they really are not in this change. We are, we are talking about most of them, no? In their, in their expectations, the, the changes are not, mm, are not important. Mm -hmm. What they want is to, to, to go to the old, or um, yes, the old roads of the, of the writer, no? And they want the old way of publishing. <laughs> they want all of this, no? I'm very much for changes, no? Mm -hmm. I think the, um, that's something we can, Stress promote from also from the school or from the schools mm -hmm. or writing and of course from projects like Sila, no. Um, but I, should, I, I think that sometimes we are we are too. Um, we we have the we have our desires before the reality sometimes, no. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I don't know if you know that uh, Sila project in it's a lot of things, but it's also a great productor of metaphors. Now we have this uh, cow and chaos affair in the first edition. Mm -hmm. I think it was a perfect metaphor of the need of projects like this mm -hmm. to understand ourselves. And we have also, uh, this, this, in this edition, the theme text was about changes. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and you make a joke to me, you know, I remember, and you change it in the, in the presentation for chains. So change and change are not the same thing, and I, I, I would like I would like to to advise no, about the, the danger, real danger that all these changes that we are looking for will transform themselves in chains, mm. in new chains. The, in the ancient world, we have at least a structure. People get paid for what they get paid, 
And it's a danger that we start with new roles that aren't paid, as it was said in the previous debate. So, well, I am for changes, but take care with the change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Say that. Vladimir, you, you, uh, you, 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 you introduced yourself as, as a writer in the first place, but you're also artistic director. Would you say this is part of your art artistic practice, those two things? Are you also an artist when you're an artistic director? Yeah, yeah, these things are inter not interchangeable. Mm. I mean, there is no clear dividing line between mm. one and the two. There is in the <coughs> span of one day, there is, there is a part of the day when I do one thing and a part of the mm. day when I do another, but basically they all originate from the same source in a way. And I think it's really tedious to be just a writer. Mm. That's my own yeah. uh, experience. Yeah, yeah. I think you need a lot of ego in order to carry <laughs> it around. You're always within yeah. yourself, mm. you refer, refer to the world from yourself. Yeah. You're representing yourself all the time. Yeah. And I had a period of time uh, when I could leave off writing, and it ended up in kind of like self-loading in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I decided that I just didn't want to do it. I wanted to do something which involved interaction with other people mm -hmm. and to do things for other people mm -hmm. as well. So to me, it was also ac activism. Um, I was doing political publishing in a way. Yeah. I'm working on the, on the literary festival. And this all produces for me a lot of joy that I don't necessarily get off writing. Yeah. Going back to you, Martino, you also are the head of a school, um, thinking about what the future of writing is, what the future of writing is. When you listen to, to Vladimir, um, is there something that you think about when, when you think about training writers, that you're not training people to produce text? Yeah, I, I recognize myself in Vladimir's uh, words. Um, and this might sound like a provocation, but the way I personally see it is that one hour of writing a day is the reward I get for working all day on other projects mm -hmm. with other people, mm -hmm. with my feet planted on the ground, maybe even in uh, care contexts mm -hmm. or within the school or with other institutions. And I, and I think it's hard to find a balance between uh, daily work and writing, but there's, um, there's a connection there. And there is, a, uh, you know, it's, they're like communicating wells, mm -hmm. one and the other. So you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not. The only, the only one. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm just not. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, think, uh, I think that there is a trade-off also. Um, daily work um, can be in organizing, can be in teaching, in training. Uh, it can also be the work of a writer for other institutions, for mm. other companies. A lot of our students who graduate from Scuola Holden come to Scuola Holden because they want to publish, and some eventually do, but most of them uh, keep writing for a, a living. Uh, and that's a trade-off, I realize that. And your creativity is limited there, mm -hmm. but it's also a privilege to be able to work with words, let's say for you know, uh, Doctors Without Frontiers, mm -hmm. or for hospitals, or for um, a political party, why not? Mm -hmm. And there's retribution in there. This is a different retribution than we talked before uh, about before. Um, living of royalties only is, I think, impossible. The example you gave of the woman in the United States. Ada Limon. Ada Limon. Well, great. Look her up. Don't buy her books. You've uh, sold she's, enough. She's great. Yeah. She's great. Um, <clears throat> but um, is, this, is this your wish, you would say, to live only of this? Or do you recognize yourself in what Vladimir and also Martino said, is that the practice is larger than the writing only? Uh, no, it, it's not my wish. I don't write only literature. I also write for theater mm -hmm. and for film, and it's something I don't necessarily want to do, but I do it for money. Mm -hmm. uh, I, also books, I do subtitles. I teach from time to time, so no. I do like a lot of things, mm -hmm. and I wish I wasn't forced to do all these things, yeah, just yeah. part of them. Yeah, I understand, yeah. So, yeah. And yeah, we are very different. We come from different backgrounds. We are in different countries where things work differently. So I think for me, the most important lesson here seeing you all these days is, was 
to really understand how different we are and how different our experiences mm -hmm. are um, professionally yeah. and how hard it is to uh, you know try to, f to find a pattern for for all of us mm -hmm. you know, like uh, I was talking to some colleagues earlier about um, this um, themed text we had to write and mm -hmm. that we would perform in the festivals mm -hmm. uh, change and it, it I don't think it quite works for everyone, you know. And I think, like, maybe in the future, mm -hmm. <laughs> for the future editions of SILA, maybe um, together with translators, maybe we could um, um, focus differently on each writer and mm -hmm. on their portfolio and on what they might offer to the foreign country they mm -hmm. are presenting themselves to. So I, I think, um, you know, uh, Maybe something really general doesn't work for everyone because we have so different experiences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think this is also what we discussed this week, um, also in the improving of the project, just what you what you suggested, um, and also to look at writers and translators more as a literary artist to have what you said, also the retention maybe somewhere else, as you mentioned in your daily practice. <laughs> I want to go back to the question Nordje uh, posed. Um, do we as organizations have a, um, a, a, like a responsibility towards society? And do we have to encourage writers to take this responsibility? Maybe uh, Ella, you, could, you could reflect upon this from the, your yeah, point of view. I think it's a very complex issue because mm. we, are, we cannot force anybody to do something. Mm. But we, because we are a public institution or institutions, most of us. So we have a very certain kind of responsibility because mm -hmm. uh, we, we are a kind of social service and we work in the literary field, which is also uh, full of um, the sense of mission. Mm -hmm. um, and it, of course, um, writers are very sensitive um, and, and they reflect a lot about what is going on currently. Um, so sometimes they take the responsibility, which is wonderful to see, and our role is to facilitate that. Mm -hmm. uh, so if if writer uh, comes up with an idea that wants to uh, do a social project, our role is to provide him or she with uh, a special tool mm -hmm. or, or resources that we have. Um, for example, when uh, when there was a need of some space for Ukrainian uh, organizations in our headquarters, we gave them the space because they wanted to have Ukrainian lessons um, in there. So, we I think that our ro our role as as organizations is to make sure that uh, the agents, I mean artists that would like to be uh, more involved in social programs, are equipped with all those tools mm -hmm. we are uh, able to give them. Um, and Norci posed a question upon us, um, what do we need as organizations to provide this? Uh, Vladimir, how do you work from Belgrade in this situation? Well, we have a very specific situation in Serbia, obviously, and I guess each country separately, mm. separately does. Uh, and I don't think that uh, uh, literature exists besides politics. I mean, mm. whenever you open your mouth, you promote certain values. Yeah. So this is what it comes down to. But on another hand, as you have said, you can't programmate people, you can't put them in a position where they feel obliged that they have to mm. provide something and it's perfectly all right for them to, if they feel like writing sonnets about flowers, fair enough, I mean, you know, they can still, seriously, they can still, I mean, we have been forced throughout the, because of the situation in the country in the 1990s, when the country was imploding and falling apart mm. and, you know, and then, and still there you have to represent that. I mean, you know, uh, uh, there, there is a chance for you as a Balkan writer within European literature if you provide gore and blood and, you know, weird human yeah. relations and whatnot. And it, it came to the point where it really started to bug me and uh, I was writing about that. This is how I started because I felt that in my gut and I didn't really kind mm. of even think about it. I just expressed it. But then at the end of the day, it became kind of mechanic mechanical. And the whole thing felt like pyrotechnics, like you, you're using really the bad politics of the country to communicate. Mm -hmm. And then I was thinking, so what about just writing the simple thing, like two people fell falling in love with each mm -hmm. other? Can you really make it a plausible literature? Yeah. And that felt also really, really important to me to get relieved mm -hmm. of all the uh, social obligation and to just really go back to the roots and to the basics. And sometimes literature is about simple things that happen between two people within the context that has nothing to do with 
large social questions. Mm -hmm. So the hybrid situation is not only in the in the daily practice in the in the, in the professional practice, but also it's also artistically hybrid. I didn't quite get your question. So it also <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's just too complicated for me. <laughs> no, I was saying that as you as you uh, work as a writer and as a uh, director, these are two things that you combine them, and. I, I read your book, this is very political, but um, you also write other things. You also combine them within one uh, authorship. So it's not just, you're not a political writer. No, I, sh I wouldn't call myself a no. political writer. No. Really, I'm a writer. Yeah. I mean, that's what yeah. it comes yeah. down yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. When, when I listen to Noche and I think about all this project that she's doing, um, and she's also calling upon us, of course, um, I think, is it something that that's suitable in each country, um, for instance, working in care with writers, working with the elderly, or is this a situation that is mainly um, possible of probability possible in the Netherlands? Could you imagine this to work in Italy, for instance? <clears throat> yes, uh, we have actually, um, in the last year, we have ran a, a similar experiment, mm -hmm. uh, working in one particular hospital in this town called Alessandria, and we brought our teachers there, mm -hmm. um, and we ran workshops with um, with the doctors and the nurses. And next are the patients. And the goal we had uh, was basically a training in empathy. Okay. When, when you read it and when you write, you live other people's lives, right? Mm -hmm. You put yourself in other people's shoes. And by doing that, you, l you learn often to look through their eyes at things and to um, really see the differences. And uh, after two years of COVID, uh, it was very important in our care system that people were recognized as such, mm. as individuals and not as patients. And this had to start from the doctors and the people that worked in care structures. And I have to say, the feedback was, was amazing. They had to fight for, to find time to participate in the workshops. But, and, and, and they were very tiny workshops, just eight hours. But, but they were transformative. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I do think that as artists, as storytellers, we have, we have a great responsibility towards society and, and a great power. And um, because really we define reality through words, the, the stories we tell about the pandemic, about the war, about ourselves. And in, if we have the instruments, if we know how to do it, we can be really effective. And I actually agree with you that we should be paid a lot more. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> um, you, you said, Javier, that uh, your, most of your students, the writers to be, are focused on, on publishing, pu publishing yeah. a book. How do you look at this position of the writer that Martino just mentioned, working in care? Uh, mm -hmm. Is it something that you would uh, promote from your school? Yeah, of course. And, uh, in fact, we went to the Netherlands with Norge to learn how you were doing there, uh, this kind of things to bring it, to bring them to, to Spain. And we are working on it, and we are working on, on doing it because I completely agree with, with Martino that uh, something we need to do, mm -hmm. and something uh, writers can do, and something uh, we as schools or as institutions can do. And of course, I think we have, uh, as institutions, of course, uh, a great social responsibility, and we have to take care of it. And as individuals, as, as a, uh, individual writers, we have the opportunity to do mm -hmm. it. I don't think we have to, it's not, it's not mandatory, as, as, a, <laughs> as Vladimir said. No? Uh, uh, we have the opportunity to do it. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people that likes to take profit of this opportunity yeah, yeah. and do it. No? So, um, so I, th I, in, I think this is, uh, this is the, the, the answer. No? Uh, institutions, yes, has the, the, the responsibility, mm -hmm. and, and, we, and I think something we have to be very aware of. Or, or, or who are here? No, we are not neutral. Never in the in, in society, um, and we also have to know this as writers. We are not neutral, but um, 
we are also free. And we are free to decide if we want to, know, to, do, to do it for a society or mm. not. Yeah. And you as a writer, would you, um, instead of writing for cinema or for, 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 for TV, would you be um, compelled to do this, working in these kind of projects? Um, definitely. Um, it depends now on what we are sensitive to, because mm -hmm. uh, maybe some of us are sensitive to some other issues. For instance, I also write for children, mm -hmm. and I'm very interested in this um, and, and campaigns that we have in Romania to uh, take books, new books, to uh, to the villages where mm -hmm. they don't have pu yeah. public libraries yeah. anymore. So uh, this is the kind of thing I would fight mm -hmm. for and I expose myself for because mm -hmm. I think we we are in a very noisy world, you know, like social mm -hmm. media is full of heroes and people doing justice and and, and, and sometimes you feel like um, if you scream too much then there's just some extra noise there. So um, I'm really cautious about what I um, um, fight for <laughs> you know, and what I expose myself for but this is uh, this is something I would definitely work for with my full heart so uh, it depends on you know what issues we are sensitive to but definitely I, yeah. mm -hmm. I would be involved in, so in something that moves me I think we all agree but then we come to talk about the revenues and the money and the revenue model um, I'm, I'm prohibited by Mikhail to use the word ecosystem so we find <laughs> we will find a new word for this um, because in the ecosystem we eat each other, he said. So he said connecting, <laughs> eating, literary artists. Um, but the revenue model, I, if I listen closely to what Anne Bergman, uh, by Bergman is saying, she is saying that we should not um, reflect upon society and do these kinds of projects and, and work upon, uh, towards a new mind shift, as Ilke uh, put it, um, through policy and through grants, etc. cetera. Uh, we should do it from the market. Um, me, myself, I'm puzzled how, uh, do you have any ideas how to provoke this change or how to enable uh, uh, writers to, to be in this project? Can we do without grants, do you think? Um, I don't think we can and I don't think we should <laughs> either. <laughs> uh, seriously, market has its own dynamics mm -hmm. and it would force certain things about people that they would not necessarily be willing willing to do. So this provides a kind of a limited freedom from the financial uh, aspect and uh, certain uh, projects can be uh, initiated that otherwise would not exist. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. And then also market works in different uh, ways in various countries. It's, it's not the same everywhere. Uh, regarding Serbia, we have a massive monopoly in the book market mm -hmm. uh, where the main two major publishers are also the two major booksellers and they cover about 75% of the, of the bookshops and mm -hmm. the production of books uh, on an annual level in, in Serbia. So imagine this situation where these two guys or two you know, boards of directors or whatnot would be in the position to direct almost everything that mm -hmm. happened culturally or regarding uh, literature yeah. publishing in, in a country like Serbia. So the, luckily uh, there is an independent sector, there is a minority publishing, there is a lot of uh, writers that are engaged in uh, NGOs and small independent organizations that uh, rely on outside funding mm -hmm. and you can, you can uh, realize your pro uh, project because of that. Yeah. Yes, I agree that we definitely should rely on institutions, but for that we need to have healthy institutions and we need to, um, us as a society in each in our countries to, to be a, like um, a, a healthy society and a healthy democracy and make sure that those institutions are run by people who are really competent and mm -hmm. know what they're doing and they're not rotated like this from one institution to another by a certain party they are You're affiliated talking to. You're national, national institutions? Yes, national Yeah, because in Serbia, I'm, I'm not even taking into consideration national institutions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm talking EU money and that's, yeah. that's all the that okay. <laughs> So towards the EU, we could say uh, one of the things that we need in transforming the market, as they call it, in the circulation of books and, and, and of translation, is also funding for this other role, the more the role of the literary artist. Is it something that we as SELA could do, you think, Martino, to involve this more in the project? Yeah, I think I have no answer. I'm puzzled as well. Yeah. But one thing that I sense is that 
uh, I want to go back to something that was being said before. Um, we should all kind of gather and lobby for more. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in this conversation with the European Union, uh, we should make it clear that it's not just something that we um, advocate for or that we reclaim bec for us, mm -hmm. for us as artists. Mm -hmm. Our output, the work we do, uh, translates into general well-being. It translates into happiness. It translates into um, freedom and critical thinking across the continent, right? Yes. One book at a time, one poem at a time, mm -hmm. one event at a time, uh, one yeah, a workshop in, in, with the elderly. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, this massive uh, uh, input that we provide has to be recognized mm -hmm. and therefore sustained by the institutions. Is this also something that you could uh, advocate in from your situation as an LP, you're a literary professional, at the beginning of your career, I, I can say? Um, is this a future for you, a uh, future tra trajectory towards what Martino has just said? Well, um, I, I want to agree with Lavinia uh, in mm. terms of what you are saying, that we need healthy societies to make Europe great again, that it is impossible to you know, just think about happiness across Europe if we have a lot of tensions in the countries that, like, like ours, mm -hmm. are very, um, are struggling internally with some, some things. But um, yeah, I think that uh, you also said about something about power, and it, this is something that is also part of my role or our role, mm -hmm. uh, because we have uh, some power. Even if we have to rely on grants in terms of publications, we have this symbolic power, which is very, very important. And our role is, uh, I think it's, it's um, foster those themes that are un underrepresented um, in the literary field and, and literary-wise. Uh, because uh, if we leave all to the market, um, it would be very hectic because the time is changing because uh, we have news and television and it's catchy, so it's, it's good to publish a biography of Volodymyr Zawinski now, mm -hmm. which is going to, be, it's going to happen next, next month, I think, in Poland. Um, so I think that our role is being advocate for uh, themes that could be forgotten, uh, but shouldn't be forgotten. Mm -hmm. um, but it is still very small scale um, because I can do it in my, my city, maybe my country, but Europe-wise it is a big challenge and it needs collective power to, to do that because it's, it's very complicated. It's something that we discussed this week to also address themes from CELA. Um, so I think um, this could reshape also CELA thinking like this and thinking um, on the future and not only thinking in publications and, and the market. Uh, Javier? Yes, no, just to say that I, that I think that we go in the same way that they are, no? We are, um, what we are doing here in CELA or what we are doing with the, the, this European money, this, uh, the European... Someone wants to tell me something. <laughs> <laughs> European help of... Uh, uh, and this project that should be out of the market, the market should be in, the, in his way, but uh, this project out of the market, what I think that we, we are doing is building a new story for, for Europe. We are, build, we are writing the story for Europe. We are giving our Europe, the Europe of the one who are here, that is very different to another Europe that are outside, um, it's, a, it's a story, a common story for all of us, and it's built probably by many small stories. No? So I think this kind of projects and the, and the, and the um, financing of the European Union, I, 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 I agree with you, probably Spanish authorities are much, much more trustable, but anyway, anyway uh, I'm talking about Europe, I think this Europe need, needs a story, and a story for all of us, no? And I think that's one of the things still mm -hmm. I have to focus on. Yeah. Which we are doing. Yeah. yeah. Are there any questions or remarks or maybe suggestions or great ideas from, from you guys? Yeah. No? You should keep the awkward moment <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. until they become like and somebody eventually. <laughs> Let's no party. <laughs> Everyone is hungry. Okay. Um, so, um, if maybe in hindsight you think 
working on the future of CELA, um, so we will, uh, as we decided this week, go for another application uh, by uh, somewhere around next year, I think, uh, the end of next year, um, and we will work on improving the project. We got a lot of um, great remarks by everyone out of the workshops and in the discussions, etc. But uh, don't forget, we are open to your suggestions because you're the ones uh, that we are working with and for, etc. So um, don't hesitate to um, to find us through Kim or through Slack, um, <laughs> uh, or directly to to one of the, the the people you work with in your country. But I think improving Selah um, is is um, um, a responsibility for all of us. We cannot do this uh, only as organizations. We have to do this together. So this is an invitation, as Lisa has an invitation for um, working collaboratively uh, and then in collectives. Lisa, there you go. Um, uh, we, we would love to invite you to think with us on the future of CELA, um, things that are marvelous, things that are not going right, things that could be imposed uh, in the project. Uh, find us, please. Um, I have only one thing before I thank you, and that is um, that in the just outside this room, <laughs> there are these two installations made by Maria no. and, Adi and Ariana. Um, they are transmedia storytelling installations. Um, also things you can do as a writer. Uh, talk to the writers, um, and if you want more information on it, uh, you can also talk to me or Kim, um, or maybe not Kim, um, mm -hmm. because everybody wants to talk to Kim. Talk to me. Um, and um, um, uh, enjoy this. Don't, don't miss this. I, I underline this here. Um, I would like to thank uh, you guys for your attention. We recorded this. Uh, we will put this online um, as part of our communication also with the European Union. So I think um, from, from my point of view, I'm very happy with all that is said. And I would thank you very much. And I would like to, to applause as hard as you can for this marvelous panel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure. So, um, um, we, um, we, we are almost entering the moment that we uh, came here for, uh, the photo moment. <laughs> so I know that Willem Bongesdek from the Buren, uh, he is wearing a tie now. There he is. So <laughs> let Willem be an example on this. Um, um, and Alejandro has, has chosen his best shirt, made in Mexico. Uh, <laughs> wonderful. So um, we are, um, I'm not sure, uh, where are we going to do this? Here? I, Is anyone the, uh, Alejandro, see here? I'm yeah. going to be upstairs and everybody. And everybody will be here. So uh, we will remove the tables. We will be, we'll, we'll be here and, and, and uh, Marta, you will say when you're ready. Yeah, okay, great, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh.
się los tak bardzo. Aflojas un momento la música. Isabel.